God. <laughs> uh, the time a photographer stuck his boner in my face. That type of shit. <laughs> what is up, you guys? Young Lit Mama. I'm back again. I feel like you guys are going to see me a lot, and that's a good thing. I hope. <laughs> um, I'm looking a little crazy. Uh, when do I not? Um, the last video, I had absolutely no makeup on. This video, I'm in PJs, rocking some long johns, and I'm face masking right now, so... I figured since I threw on a face mask and I really was in a talkative mood, um, I figured I would get some of these story time videos going. This one isn't going to be along the lines of addiction. This one is going to be more along the lines of modeling and... Um, more directed towards that part of my life. Yeah, modeling is a big part of me, what I do, and in doing that, um, I've been doing this, I don't know, between 10 months and a year now, and I have done more shoots than I can count. I have had some issues with a couple photographers, I've had my fair share of issues with models, and that's kind of what I'm going to get into today. Um, we're staying away from the drama, but I have some really important information, tips, um, a story of something that happened to me, and I want to share it with all of you. I want to share it with those who are interested in modeling and doing this sort of thing or already are in modeling. Um, it's life. It's the real world. There's shit people out there and sometimes you can't always read that right away. So um, today's video is actually going to be a little story time about what I would say was a pretty uncomfortable and crappy situation. So this story is a little bit of an uncomfortable one, but I think it needs to be told. I think it needs to be said. Um, there are some shitty situations that can happen and I wish I knew kind of how to handle it better in the situation. All right, you guys, so this is the story of when I had two photographers um, get a boner while we were shooting. So, so where do we even start with this? Um, I'm going to keep everybody's names private um, just because that's not the point of this video. The point of the video is to educate and have all my other uh, females and male photographer or models be aware and understand maybe a better way to go about this situation if it happens to you. So, first things first, I will say this and I will stand by it. I have always stood by it. It is very, very, very inappropriate for a photographer to get aroused in any sort of way and show it to the model. Um, I get if you're attracted to maybe somebody that you're working with, but that needs to stay in your head. And if you aren't able to control your body and things that your body does when they get aroused around a female, then you probably shouldn't be a photographer or maybe you should work on how to stop those urges from happening and be a little bit more professional. So that being said, let's get into it. All right, so, oh my gosh, you guys, where do I even start with this? So me and a girlfriend of mine at the time were hanging out and she had been talking on and on and on about this photographer friend of hers. And I knew who it was. I had, they were, their um, like Instagram was pretty big within our community. Uh, he was a really, really, really talented photographer. His editing skills were on point. I checked him out and I was really, really intrigued by this photographer she was talking about nonstop. So 
Uh, she was telling me this story one time about how she, you know, she went over to his house and he lives with a roommate and his roommate will help him, right? He'll be kind of like his lighting guy or mm, an assistant, if you will. Um, and so she had gone to their house a couple different times and shot and got some photos back and they looked amazing, you guys. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous photos. Um, so I remember one day hanging out with her, she brought this guy up yet again. It was pretty obvious that I think she had a little crush on him and she, you know, was telling me that they were kind of talking, um, but she couldn't really tell. He was being a little flirtatious with her and she liked him as well. So no red flags went off in my head yet. It the way she presented it was, you know, he was attracted to her, she was attracted to him, and they were talking. So, okay, whatever. I remember um, hanging out with her, and she decided that we were all four going to hang out. So it was going to be me, her, this photographer guy she was talking to, and his roommate, right? So I remember we picked him up. I was smoking a J. Picked him up, and we went to a cannabis event and decided we were going to hang out. Uh, they, you know, smoked and had never been to one of these events before, so it was kind of my way of getting to know the photographer and the kid. Um, yeah, so I remember we were hanging out, everything was cool, nothing weird or anything. Uh, pretty nice guys, and yeah, that was it. Went to our event, hung out, got something to eat, and went back home. All right, you guys, so I think I needed to put this little other incident in the video that I completely forgot about until right now when I was editing. So I remember when we dropped off the photographer and the roommate at their house after the event, the roommate proceeded to lean over my shoulder while I was riding shotgun and ask why I was looking at porn on my cell phone. Um, first off, why are you looking over my shoulder at my phone screen? Secondly, what if I was looking at porn? And third, I was on Suicide Girls. <laughs> like, um, totally inappropriate. That should have been a flag to me. <sighs> Another red flag. Like I said, you guys, you need, you need to pay attention to the photographers even the models that you're hanging around with um, especially if you don't know them pay attention to their body language what they say and hopefully you won't get yourself in a situation like i did so let's continue this really awkward story so dropped him off said our goodbyes whatever well it was like the next day or the next couple days i had gotten a direct message from this photographer asking if i would like to collab and do like some TFP stuff. So basically I wouldn't be paying him, he wouldn't be paying me. This is a collaboration, we're working together to get content, right? So I said, sure, absolutely, I would love to. Let's make it a day thing because the girl uh, that I was friends with at the time, you know, suggested, hey, we might as well just, you know, pick a day and do as much shooting, as much content as we can in that day. So I was like, damn, perfect, because at that time, I actually had a couple things lined up. So I needed to submit to three different magazines at that point, all right, three. So two of them had reached out to me wanting photos, and one of them was a submission. So I was trying to do a photo set, send it to them, and hope that they buy it, right? Okie dokie, I want to clarify one thing and that is me even jumping into this situation with a photographer that I didn't know. 99.99999% of the time, and it's not 100 because obviously I did it that one time, but usually when I am submitting or being asked to submit to a magazine, I am working with a photographer or crew or whatever. I'm working with people that I've worked with before. And that is usually to ensure I don't get scammed, I get my um, sets back on time, everybody's accountable, that sort of thing. I know and I have trust with the photographer. 
Um, I didn't do that this time. I instead took the word of the girlfriend that I had who said she had worked with him several times and never had an issue. So I was using somebody else's experience in place of my own, which you should never do, especially in this business. So I did want to just let you know that's where my mind was at when I agreed to shoot with this person and submit to a magazine and I had never worked with them. So um, I was like, perfect, I need some content. He's an amazing photographer, let's do it. So fast forward to the day that we are shooting, right? We get to his place, I think it's around 11 or noon. Meanwhile, I have hung out with them before, remember? Um, and we had smoked, I'd been in their house, whatever. So this day, I remember we get there and um, it's a total dude's house where they live, you know, like there's not really furniture, there's nothing on the walls, whatever. So I remember um, me and her laying out all of our stuff because usually I just throw a bunch of stuff in a bag unless it's a pre-planned concept. And when I get to location, I usually take everything out and me and the photographer will go through the outfits that I brought and we'll kind of decide what we want to do. So that's what I was doing. I was, you know, laying out everything and he was, you know, oh, I like that, 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 right? We ended up picking like five to eight different outfits, which means five to eight different sets, right? And so I was like, yo, that's a lot. Is that okay? He said, yes, I want to, you know, get some content. Let's knock it out, right? So, you know, me and her are kind of going back and forth trading off. She'll go out and shoot, and then I'll shoot. We'll do a shoot together, and we just kind of keep going, right? So, um, I remember we shot a ton of stuff, and the content that we did ranged from, you know, some cannabis shots where I was literally fully clothed, just being really cute, smoking, then we did some like a multi where me and her were doing that together. And then we did some more um, like nude shoots. We did like a watermelon shoot where I was completely nude. And I was like, I had like a dog tag and I was like biting into a piece of watermelon. <coughs> um, yeah, we did a bunch of stuff. And everything was all right. Um, I personally wasn't noticing anything weird or uncomfortable. Um, were the guys flirtatious? Yes, absolutely. Um, but I'm a very flirtatious person too, so I don't know. Um, so I just remember going out, going throughout the day. You know, we even went outside and did a completely nude, um, like, flexibility set where I was, like, totally... Um, I was covered in baby oil and I was completely nude and I was doing like the splits and I was sending that to an athletic magazine. I wanted to send that to an athletic magazine and he knew that. He knew all of the places and the sets that needed to be done so that we could submit, right? My face is getting tight. So fast forward to the very last set of the day. It's probably evening time, maybe five or six, and we were doing a cereal bathtub shoot, all right? So I had this tank top on that was like an old school MTV's uh, vintage tank. I had this cute bowl with, you know, like Fruit Loops, milk, and then we were in a giant tub. And, you know, I was being all cute, and I was like, I had the bowl, and I was pouring the milk, or I was pouring the cereal, and I'd, like, take a bite. I have, like, one or two photos from that, and I will try to insert them here. So, um, those are, like, the one or two. I really don't even know what I have. Those are, that's what I have. That's all I have. Um, and we'll get to that. But 
we're shooting this set and I remember my girl is in there and she's getting some behind the scenes for me, right? But she's not really paying attention to the guys. I remember the main photographer was up. So I'm sitting in the tub and he's like this and he's up over the tub, right? And the other guy, the roommate, is in the shower and he's holding like the ref the light reflector, right? We don't need that light reflector, but whatever. He's doing his thing, so I'm just, you do you. <laughs> um, well, uh, maybe five minutes into me doing this set, um, it got to a point where, you know, I'm covered in milk. So my shirt is kind of see-through and it's supposed to be a sexy shoot, right? Okay, whatever. So I just remember one of them like made this really awkward eye contact with me. And when that happened, I don't know, there's just something in this eye contact that made me feel a little uncomfortable. So I started kind of paying more attention to the photographer's body language when I was shooting. And we get about halfway through this sexy nude serial shoot. And at this point, I don't have a shirt on. I don't have bottoms on. And I'm just sitting in this milk bath covered in cereal and milk right and I catch a glimpse I catch a glimpse of something I did not want to see I looked over and not one but both of the photographers had a boner out for the world to see straight up in my face because this guy is like this in the bathtub and I'm like this isn't happening this is not hap this has never happened before <laughs> what's going on it made me super uncomfortable so I kind of just I started kind of remember posing a little odd and they just kept shooting and it was so prevalent like they had to have known I saw and they both, both of them had a boner. So I remember they started arguing her about something and I turned to my friend and I'm like, yo. You know what I mean? I'm like, yo girl, he's got a fucking boner right now. Like I'm not cool with this. So I remember like saying, yeah, you know what? I, I'm done, I'm tired. You know, we've been shooting a lot. I think you have enough content, let's go. And he just, they both, I remember they both kept saying like, no, 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 we're, we're, we're almost done. Let's just get a couple more. Let's just get a couple more. And these couple more turned into like a good another 30, 45 minutes. And then I was like, you know what, dude, I'm done. Um, both of them have, you know, their boners in my face. It's so uncomfortable, so unprofessional, and I'm just done, right? So I'm like, no, okay. I'm done, I'm good, I'm gonna get out. So I remember I got out, cleaned up, and I just kinda shut down. I remember going and cleaning up my bag, packing everything up, um, and I remember him saying like, oh, you guys are done, you're leaving, and I'm like, yeah, you know, it's tired, I gotta get home to the baby, whatever. So we left on a fine note, I didn't say anything, looking back on it now, that was so inappropriate and I should have said something and or left right then and there, but I didn't. Um, so after this happened, I just remember I didn't want to shoot with him anymore. Um, but before I left, I looked at all the photos, right? Because I'm not going to lie. He's an amazing photographer. His editing skills are fucking great. Um, so I'm looking at all the shots and I'm, I'm in love with them. I fucking love them. So I remember going home and, you know, talking to her about it and she was like shocked. She's like, wait, what? They had boners? And I was like, dude, how did you not see it? Like, all right, you guys. So I just realized I didn't do a really good job of explaining what I was talking about now. Um, but basically this whole first part that I just talked about was really geared towards the super inappropriateness that happened while at my shoot with said photographer. Um, and now I'm going to talk about what happened 
after our photo shoot and how he was really, really unprofessional with me. So let's get into it. And now here comes the unprofessionalism. So before we had shot together, he was very responsive, very communicative, you know, really, really wanted to shoot. After we shot, a couple weeks went by, um, and <laughs> um, a couple weeks, a couple weeks, a couple weeks went by, and I remember I reached out, and I said, you know, hey, how's the editing going? Let me know when you get a couple previews because I love to see them. Um, you know, do you know of an idea when you'd maybe be done with one of the sets because I need to submit it? Whatever. So I reached out, right? And I remember I didn't get anything back. So I was like, okay, maybe he's just busy. So I gave it another day and I reached out again and I was like, hey, you know, I didn't hear back from you, how's everything going, yada, yada, yada. And he just said like, hey, sorry, I've been really, really busy. Um, I'm really depressed right now. There's a lot of stuff going on, whatever. So I was like, oh, you know, I'm so sorry. I understand, hope everything's good. Um, you know, maybe no rush, but just, you know, a couple of them are time sensitive, right? So he said, yeah, I know, I'll get done with them in a couple days. So I was like, oh, perfect, cool. So a couple days went by and nothing. So I was like, yo, dude. So I messaged him again and I was like, hey, it's been a couple days. You said a couple days, do you have anything? So he sends me two or three photos. <laughs> gosh they're beautiful I love them yay I'm so excited to see the rest let's get these submitted I'm excited right so <laughs> nothing again I get this message and it's really long about you know how he there's a lot going on with him and he's really financially fucked right now so he can't even be doing anything that's free um, I should understand that paid work comes first, blah, blah, blah. Now, I understand paid work comes first. Trust me, I get that. But you, that guy, reached out to me. He wanted to shoot with me, all right? And then on top of that, we communicated beforehand and I said, hey dude, look, a couple of these I need back pretty quickly or in a reasonable amount of time. So I kind of said that to him, you know, in a nice way. I was like, look, dude, I'm sorry you're having financial issues, but that doesn't really have anything to do with our conversation professionally. I'm just really wondering when I can get these sets back because at this time, it had already been over a month. Over a month. Time went by, we had that little argument, and I, he told me at the end of it, you know, I will get your stuff back to you within a week. I gave him two, three, four, a month, two months. You guys, a couple months went by, and at that point, all my deadlines had passed. I couldn't submit to anything, you know what I mean? Um, and so after a few months, I finally just messaged him, messaged him and I was like, look, dude, this is really unprofessional. I understand the struggles you're having. Trust me, I've been there too. But you promised things and committed to things and they're not being fulfilled. So at this point, I really, the photos are probably gorgeous and I would love to have them, but I wouldn't ever post them because I wouldn't want if I post our photos, it's basically me saying that, hey, yes, this person I worked with, this photographer I worked with is okay to work with. He's professional. He's good. I'm basically saying I'm giving the green light. If I were to post anything at this point that we had done together, I'm giving other models the okay that this person's 
cool to work with. And I wasn't cool saying that because I don't think he was cool to work with. He was inappropriate. He made me uncomfortable. He didn't fulfill anything he said he was going to fulfill. Why would I want to promote that? So basically that's what I said to him in a nice way. I was like, look, I don't even want these photos anymore. So thank you, but no thank you. Keep them. It was a waste of time. To this day, I think I only received three photos. They're fucking gorgeous, but I will never post them, and so no one will ever get to see how pretty they are. But I will never post them. I'll never tag who it is, um, because they don't deserve it, you know what I mean? They made me feel so uncomfortable, they were so unprofessional with me, and I don't think it's right. During the time that he was complaining to me that he had no money and that, you know, he was depressed and wasn't working, during that time, I still followed him. I still saw him booking shoots. I still saw him collabing with other people and giving them their photos before mine and going to events and dropping cash. And I saw him working, okay? So it's not like he wasn't doing anything. He just was being very unprofessional and lying straight up. So that's the end of this video. I know it was a little quick story time and thank you guys for hanging out with me. I hope it was informational of some sort. I hope you guys are ever in this situation. You stand up and say something. You at least say it's inappropriate. You, you walk away or just don't get into it. So um, thank you guys for watching. You can always find all of my social media linked down below. Um, the face mask that I'm wearing will be linked down below. The shirt, you can, I will leave the um, shirt's information down below as well. This is a cannabis brand that I rock. And until next time, if you guys would like to see a part two to the shitty or crappy um, modeling situations I've been in. I do have another like horror um, photography situation that happened. No, I wouldn't label it as that. Um, I label it more as like getting scammed. So um, this was kind of like part one of the crappy side of modeling. So if you would like to see a part two about mama getting scammed by a photographer, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below, subscribe, ring the bell, and until next time, talk to you later. Bye.